day class welcome back to the course ECN 316 international economics 2 um, this our second session in the first session we discuss balance of payments and in this session we are going to discuss components of balance of payment and balance of payment adjustment mechanisms introduction in this session we shall be discussing the components of balance of payment and its adjustment mechanisms. <clears throat> we shall start by discussing the different components of balance of payment. Then we will discuss the different ways in which imbalances in the balance of payment can be adjusted. At the end of this session, you should be able to highlight the various components of balance of payment should be able also to explain the balance of payment adjustment mechanisms. Um, we go straight to the content of the session, which is the components of balance of payment. Now, what are the components of balance of payment? Now, as we mentioned in the first session, that balance of payment is the collection of all the activities that has to do with the country, a domestic economy, and, an in, and the international economy. Now, the, the collection of different activities makes up the components of balance of payment. Balance of payment essentially has three components. They are the current account, the capital account, and official financing. Let's start with the current account. The current account is the summation of balance of trade, factor income, and cash transfers. Now, balance of trade, like we explained earlier in the previous session, is the earning on export minus payment for import. The difference between payment for import and earning from export is the balance of trade. Now, another component of current account is factor income. Factor income is the earning on foreign investment minus payment made for foreign to foreign investors. Now, foreign investment, that is international flow of investment minus the payment that is made to these investors is the factor income. Now, and cash transfer. Now, cash transfer, any cash that is being transferred between the, uh, across the border between the domestic economy and the international market is cash transfer. Now, current account consists of these three, which are balance of trade, factor income, and cash transfer. Uh, cash transfer. Now, after sa ha having said that, the, the this component of balance of payment, which is current account, is regarded as the most important because it shows a nation's trading strength. The current account is also subdivided into two, which are visible trade and invisible trade. Visible trade is the trade in physical goods and services, for example, crude oil, machinery, clothing, and so on and so forth. Now, all the trade in visible commodities are regarded as the first component of current accounts, which is also a component of balance of payment. Now, in this account, money earned from export is credited, while money spent on import is debited. And the, the, at the end of the day, this is known as balance of trade. Balance of trade is the is the is the is the deposits of all is the is the is the record of all the transaction that has to do with visible trade at a point in time usually one year now invest invisible trade on the other hand has to do with the trade in services services rendered between the domestic economy that is regarded and the international um, um, economy now, visible trade, uh, um, 
trading services income earned from visible trade are credited while a money spent in invisible trade is debited uh, on the debit account now items of invisible trade include tourism transportation government expenditure interest profit or dividend and so on and so forth now any services that is rendered is regarded as invisible trade now we move to the next component of balance of payment which is the capital account now capital account records the net change in ownership of foreign assets ownership of foreign assets now what is foreign asset means investment investment now the net change here is talking about um <clears throat> the difference between foreign assets and and domestic assets that is taken abroad the difference between the importation of assets and the exportation of assets asset here means investment it includes the reserve account that is the foreign exchange market operations of a of a national of a nation central bank along with loans and investments between a country and the rest of the world however this does not future interest payment and dividend that uh, that the loans and investment yield over time those are earnings that will be recorded in the current account <clears throat> if a country purchases more foreign assets for cash than assets that it sells in order to other countries the capital account is said to be negative or in deficit that is if a country um if a country receives more 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 capital from the international economy than it sells capital to the international economy it is regarded as negative or deficit um, capital account another component of balance of payment is official financing the official financing is also known as total currency flow it shows the balance of monetary movement into and out of a country anything that has to do with monetary movement is recorded in the official financing now a positive figure reveals that the net inflow of funds into a country reveals the net inflow of funds into a country alternatively however a negative figure represents a net outflow which means that the 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 country supplies more currency to the international market than it um collects how uh, whenever there is a negative figure in the amount this negative figure has to be paid for through what through two sources the first one is from borrowing from the central banks and international organization that is a country uses um borrows money in order to to cushion the effect of a negative official financing on the other hand um it can also use reserve that it has in the international um organized from international organizations now every economy every central bank has reserve foreign reserves just like the excess crude account in in, in, in respect to nigeria uh, or the sovereign wealth fund now when there is a, whenever there is negative balance in the official financing it means that the nigeria for example will either borrow money from international institutions or it can use up its foreign reserve to cushion the effect of this negative balance in official financing now when the balance for official financing is positive that is let's say in the next year the official financing becomes positive then this loans from international organization or the withdrawal from foreign reserve will now be replaced back by the surplus generated in the future now this is how 
um, um, official financing tends to balance the balance of payment at the end of the day. In essence, what we are trying to say here is that the balance of payment at the end of the year must be balanced. However, it is balanced through official financing. And official financing, whenever it is negative, it borrows or it uses up its reserves in the international um, 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 savings. Now, whenever, whenever there is positive, that whenever there is excess, it now removes from this excess and replaces the foreign reserves or it pays back each loan that it collected in order to balance the balance of payment. Um, now, let's look at balance of payment adjustment mechanism. In the previous session, we discussed imbalancing the balance of payment, where we noticed that balance of payment could either be surplus or deficit. When it is surplus, it means that the balance of payment is performing above average, that is above optimum. However, when it is, um, when it is deficit, it means the balance of payment is performing below what it is supposed to be. Now, um, emphasis, however, is placed on ba balance of payment deficit rather than balance of payment surplus. Now, when there is balance of payment deficit, or when there is imbalance generally in the balance of payment, what do countries do in order to make the balance of payment to, to readjust in order to have an equilibrium in the external balance? There are two mechanisms. There are two possible ways, that is, two possible solutions in, by which the balance of payment can be readjusted. The first we have is balancing by adjusting the exchange rates. And the second is balancing by adjusting internal prices and demand. Let's look at these two. Now, balancing by adjusting the exchange rates. Exchange rate is the price of a country's currency in terms of another country's currency. Now, changing the exchange rate is used to bring surplus or deficit balance of payment back to normal. How is it done? An increase in, the, in a country's exchange rate is used, uh, an exchange in, in a country's exchange rate makes exchange rate makes the nation's export less competitive and import cheaper. Now, an increase in a country's exchange rate is used to, 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 to readjust a balance of payment from deficit back to normal. This is because by, when balance of payment is deficit and a country increases the, its exchange rate, it means that it is, it is, in other words, devaluing its currency. It means that it has to supply more of its currency than it demands foreign currency. This will make foreign goods cheaper at the expense of um, domestic goods. Now, when domestic goods are, are, are more dearer, that is when, when, um, when foreign goods are cheaper, domestic consumers, domestic firms that demand services and, and equipment for their production, and manufacturing, they tend to patronize these foreign um, commodities. Now, when they patronize these foreign commodities, it means that the, the domestic commodities will become what? Will become less. Will become less demanded. Now, in this case, the balance of payment is readjusted. It means that the balance of payment will be brought back to normal. On the other hand, a reduction in the balance of in, in the exchange rate will correct a balance of payment deficit by making export more competitive in the economy. Um, the second mechanism by which the balance of payment is adjusted is rebalancing through in internal prices and demand. A nation can correct balance of payment surplus by encouraging internal demand, by encouraging internal demand. When there is surplus in the balance of payment, it means that there is too much money coming from the external economy. Now, it means that spending on domestic goods and services will increase, will increase domestic price. It means that 
there will be too much domestic demand and this will increase the prices of domestic commodities and hence this will reduce exports. Now, this is used to correct a balance of payment surplus. However, when there is a balance of payment deficit, it is corrected using the internal prices and demand. How? By readjusting the aggregate consumption and enc encouraging, by discouraging rather, sorry, aggregate consumption and encouraging internal saving and investment. Now, when there is high internal investment and savings, it will lead to increase in export competitiveness. Increase in internal savings and increase in internal investment will mean that the, a country will now become self-sufficient and the excess now will have to be imported in the international market. And this will lead to what? international competitiveness. Now, the increase in export competitiveness will now readjust the deficit balance of payment back to normal. Um, we've come to the end of this session and we have been able to highlight <coughs> the different components of balance of payment. We will mention um, current accounts, capital accounts, and official financing. We have also been able to discuss balance of payment adjustment mechanism, which include adjust rebalancing by adjusting exchange rates and rebalancing by adjusting internal prices and demand. In our next session, we are going to be discussing trade problems that are faced by, by developing countries. Thank you very much for your time.